Welcome everyone to episode 84 of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pentelaresco, and this episode will feature the one and only Jason Bretzman in part one of a two-parter. Um, part two um, will be up Monday, and yeah, like I said, it's going to be quite a treat. So I'm going to talk about a couple things today. I'm going to talk about my first guest on the live podcast, May 24th at Allison S. Books in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The first guest I'm going to talk about actually has yet to be on my podcast in this capacity. Robert Bose is a writer, a runner, and all around amazing dude. Um, I'll never forget the fact that with Rob, um, I did my reading for the Cloud Diver in front of IFWA. IFWA is a writer's group. It has some of the most well-known writers in Canada in this group. And I was intimidated as a hell. I mean, the idea of reading in front of Randy McCharles, Ron Friedman, some of the people that have been on this show, it's a bit scary. But Rob, of all people, I, I didn't know him very well. still don't know him as well as I'd like to. But Rob actually gave me one of the nicest compliments I've ever received as a writer. And I've been grateful to him ever since. And he will be on the show. And I'm looking forward to it. And it's going to be great. So come on down. May 24th, 7 p.m. All right, what else is going on? I just did an anthology piece for uh, uh, a future guest. Uh, she asked me to do an ep epic style poem for her anthology. And the theme, Alice in Wonderland. And, I, and the thing is... Alice in Wonderland, it kind of terrifies me. Not because I don't love the Wonderland mythos. I really, really do. Lewis Carroll was a brilliant, brilliant dude. But, yeah. What can I say that hasn't already been said? I had to really think about that. And I actually owe thanks to a very lovely lady um, I met I met a couple weeks ago. And, and we've been talking ever since. And I said I'd write a poem with her in it. She had some really unique characteristics that remind me of a certain Grecian uh, character, an ancient Greek character, and and in writing her, I figured out my 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 take on Alice in Wonderland. And it's really, really, really fun, and uh, I can't wait for you all to read it. But anyway, let's get right into Jason Bretzman right now after these messages. Called a familiar story, told in a brand new way. The Watcher is about a slave boy who kills his dragon masters and goes into a post-apocalyptic wasteland, discovering that there's more to life than being a slave. The Watcher is book one of the Watcher saga, which has book two, Storm Dancer, and the concluding saga, The Wandering God, will be out later this year. It is available at mirrorworldbooks.com, amazon.com.ca, Barnes & Noble, Chapters Indigo, and any other online bookstore you can think of. Hey, how are you? I'm so far so good. I, I, uh, I, I tried calling you twice and it kind of just went, nope, not a zip, zilp, zero, so. I don't understand that. No. Skype's evil. In like a one I think it is, yeah. I, I don't use it very often. I haven't used it for like ever, so. Well, no, no it's fair. I just, it just, for me, it just, it's easier for me to reach people this way. Again, I'm learning a little bit more about recording through other means because this is going to be a little bit jury rigged in comparison to uh, um, what I've used in the past. But it's it's uh, my processor on my computer isn't quite what it was. So on my previous, I just bought, this computer died. My last computer died, but it was better for recording than this one is. So I've had a, so I'm using an alternative means to record. So so it may or may not be the best. I do not know. But anyway, man. So how how how's life today? How, how is it treating you? It's good. It's uh, it's snowed, which is good. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not good for animals and people out there, but um, it it's it gives you sort of that um, it always gives me like a child feeling, like that innocent feeling. I don't know. It it, it just it evokes, I think, writing and and everything good. You know, for me, anyways. So okay. all locked inside that trapped thing as a writer, I guess. I guess. Did yeah, you make, did, did, you did, understand. did you make a snow angel? No, I, I do though. I yeah, I mean the, the, those. I mean that's the best thing about snow is I and snow <laughs> snow angels because they're awesome and and uh, so you're 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 in you're in eastern United States, right? So I am. Yeah, I'm in Calgary. So right. and Calgary's cold, like really, really cold. And um, you're damp, but I, I I'm cold. <laughs> so, 
so. Yeah, it, well, it was like five degrees this morning here. So. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's uh, so it, it, you you got you 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 get down to where I'm at somewhat. So, no, it just uh, so like for me, I'm this is this is kind of the norm. It's like, hey, it's snowy and cold and stuff, and I work like my have a day job, and I work kind of in this, so. Um, I work in a trailer, um, I'm loading and unloading freight, so it kind of gets to the point where I was like, you know, ugh. I, I, I don't mind, uh, snow is beautiful, I, I think snow is very beautiful, but at this point I do prefer sun, I think every, I think more people win in the sun, so, but that, that's me, that is me. I would, I mean, I don't like summer, it's just, I hate, the, oh, I don't like the extreme any of it, but I would take winter over summer. And I'm the other one. I, I, I'm the other way. I go. The, I go the other way on that one. I prefer summer to winter, but I'm. It's weird now because I lived in. I lived. Uh, I lived in Phoenix, so I lived when it was really, really, really hot, and I lived in. Uh, I lived here where it's really, really, really cold. So the extremes don't bother me anymore, quite so much. So. Um, oh, I, I would die in Arizona. I've been there, and I'm just thinking to myself, how quickly can I leave? Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Actually, not all not all of Arizona is that bad. It depends. If you're in northern Arizona, it's actually more moderate. Um, it, it's um, it's uh, it's, it's Phoenix and the whole desert part of Arizona that's really really hot. But if you go up to uh, it's like the northern parts of it, it's nowhere near as um, extreme. It's windy up up in those parts because you're higher up in the alt altitude actually. So, but uh, well, I like Canada. I mean, America, America has a lot of problems. Canada doesn't. Yeah, well, no place is perfect. I mean, we have, we, we're not as extreme as you guys. Is is the is really what it comes down to. Um, with uh, with everything that's going on right now. I mean, don't. I mean, on that note, I mean, if I do travel to the states, it's going to be this year because I'm not sure I'm going to be comfortable next three years afterwards. It's, there's there's right. there's a lot of. I think I think if I really were to nail the United States' problem in one sentence, it would be this. Um, I think there's too much of a separation between people and their government, and one and one. I don't. I think I think as a whole, people in the states aren't enough involved in their communities in terms of uh, change. They're expecting. It, there, there has been a certain conditioning, expecting that um, these governments are just going to do what they're going to do, and I think that combined with the extremities of your media because your media is nuts um yeah yeah, yeah. Your, your media is nuts when you combine those two things i think you create the monsters you you see today if i admit, if i could only narrow down the one problem that would be it and um and i think i think um if anything the last election taught is that there that i think the american people in general have to be more involved with their government good bad or indifferent and otherwise, I mean, the scary part is, and this is the thing I, I, I don't really want to think about too much without an alcoholic beverage or two in me, um, is, like, what's going on, like, the past is prologue, right? Is, is, it, is an old, is an old uh, quote, but very, it's sadly very apt. I mean, I mean, what you got in there now, what's coming behind that is actually even scarier. And that, I, I don't, I don't have an answer to that. I really don't. So. I agree. It's, um, I think that Americans are just ignorant, um, kind of in a, in a blissful way. Like ignorance is bliss, and I think that they don't really. Mm, they kind of are blindly led, and then they kind of believe, in, and and then they really do, as you said. I think they think that the government is somehow just going to step in, and I mean, you're basically a number to them, and. Yep. Um, it's just it's the whole thing of, of power, you know. And, well. And not actually doing the right thing, and then the problem, though, too, in our country is that somebody else creates a bunch of problems for a set number of years, and then someone else comes in and they try to clean up their problems if they happen to be one of the halfway decent ones. And there's no way you could clean up a country's problems in four years or even eight years. So then everyone's like, "This person's no good," well, and they vote someone else in there, expecting whatever. And they obviously, obviously, they always say, "We're going to do these amazing things," but they they just can't. I mean. I wouldn't. Want, I would never want that job. Like I think it's almost insane that in school when you're little, they're like, "You can be president." Like I would never. Like Einstein was offered the presidency of of Israel, and he like graciously turned it down. It was like the only time in history that like a normal, 
non-politician. Some they just the country was like, yeah, we just want you to be president. Yep. And Albert Einstein was like, I just I'm honored, but I don't want that job. You know, yep. I think the the best job would be vice president. No, no kid ever says I want to be vice president because <laughs> you have you have some power there, but no one's gonna blame you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, no, it, it, I don't know. I I think Cheney would 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 disagree <laughs> with you. <laughs> yeah, no, I get what you're saying. I think if 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 I, to fix the quote unquote fix America, there's I think there's really um, I think the first thing I mentioned earlier is just more communication between government and people would be a huge step. And here's the irony of this: I can talk. I'm talking to you. We are thousands upon thousands of miles apart. Right. Right. So, I mean, just as a thing, just strictly as a as a technological thinking process, wouldn't it make sense then to have more access to your leaders? Not just like like for, I I have a Twitter account. You have a Twitter account. Um, there's Instagram. There's there's Tumblr. There's all these different communication programs, sure. right? Well, the whole idea of the vote is 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 uh, to express yourself, to, to put your voice out there. That's the idea behind the vote. But you could actually, if you really thought to think about it, I have a problem, and I, if I could find who my leader is on Twitter or Instagram, and there was an open communication board about it, right? Um, you could probably, you could probably, um, you know, get to the point where where some of the some of the more um, the older concepts, you could actually right. incorporate them into something more modern. Look, the fact is, like I said, we're talking. Like we we talk about snow, we're talking about politics right now. We could, we're talking about a variety of different things, right? And um, and and because we are, um, you know, this is just me and you just shooting the shit. But if but I mean, it goes to reason we could do the same thing with our politicians and what like this would be how you'd lobby. Like this should be how you'd lobby. Um. So instead of instead of going to a poll and just being counted among the millions and billions or whatever the hell it is, um, right. right? You could actually just go, okay, Donald Trump's on Twitter. Why can't I go to President Trump and go, hey, listen, you know, maybe we should rethink that whole student loan concept. Hey, listen, no, I, I'm ser- I'm serious. I mean, we. This it would be. It would, I think you know. I'm, and this is my opinion, but I think that list would be rather long for me. I would just constantly be tweeting and saying like, yes, yeah, read. But 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 but, 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 but maybe. Do you want to make it fit in the character line? Just say, let's kind of rethink um, da 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 everything. Well, oh, you know? yeah, I mean, and, and, and but <laughs> that, but that's the thing, right? This is. I mean, I mean, if you really look at today. The uh, like the opportunities to communicate with each other is more than it's ever been. I've talked I talk to people in Indonesia. I've talked to people in Malaysia. I've talked to people in Australia. I've talked to people in Europe, uh, and I do it on a regular basis. I mean, this is a luxury. I don't need to pay a phone bill. I pay an internet bill uh, once a month. But essentially speaking, right. if you really sit there and think about it, communication channels have never been more open. So. Instead of, you know, going through a more traditional means, and I think some of those traditional means should be open, the idea should be, if gov- not only should government be more transparent about what they're doing, how they're doing, and, and dealing with the big giant monster, because the, the other big problem with the states is, your government's huge. Like, just, it's like a giant monster now. Um, I don't know that it's my government. I am, I am, I, I don't know that I, 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 I hope to move. Uh, I think I, I might have wrote that to you in some of our emails, but I hope to move sometime. I mean, I don't, um, you know, I was in a band, obviously, and I traveled all over, and I saw a lot of things, and I did that, and I had a job where I was kind of traveling business guy, so I've seen a lot of this country and other countries, and I just think that, I, I mean, I love the United States, and but it's, it's like anything else, um, like even great books or great movies or any a piece of art that I love. Um, just a painting. I think there's. I'm always good. I might find something in it. No, it's, it's, it's never per. So I think that for me, I hope to. I hope to move. I love. I love British Columbia. Oh my goodness, that's, I love it there. No, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful out yeah. there. Um, where have you been in British Columbia? If you don't mind my asking. Whereabouts? Yeah, whereabouts. Well, I mean, I I have friends in Vancouver. Okay. So obviously, you know the the typical. The, the big, the big the city. Big place. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, ben, I, I, I love Portland, Oregon. Lots of friends there. Um, 
I'm a vegan, so I love the vegan scene there. I, even my friends up in Vancouver are vegan. Um, it, but I just love I just love the city. It's so green. It's so open. There's so much about your health and the environment. And I think it's really a, a that type of uh, synergy with a lot, a lot of those people. Again, it's communication and, and people being open to, to kind of everything that's going around. Like they, I think that Portland's the only city in America that that built a green. So to speak, and so they have this green line sort of around the city, and I'm sure Portlanders are going to be like, you've got that way wrong, jackass, but I think, I'm pretty sure they wrote into their laws that you cannot build, yeah. um, as, so there's like basically this huge circle around the city, So, so and that's like a, such a fabulous idea, I mean, people try to look at a place like New York City um, and say that it's very not friendly, but it's actually the most environmentally friendly thing we could do as human beings is all populate in one place and then just build up. Because you're, you know, you're not using so many resources, et cetera. But America, I think, is um, it, it's it's one of the, it's like anything. I think it's it's great and terrible, you know. Which oh, absolutely. Which is, which, you know, like most things. I think Canada is the exact same thing. Only I think that Canada uh, just is like the America, which is which is what I love about it. I recently had a friend move from here uh, to uh, it was in Ontario. I'm not sure. I think she she lives somewhere outside of Toronto or something like okay. that. And she's not coming back. She like got um, she married a Canadian, uh, which is just totally at random. Um, he was here at the time, and he has dual citizenship, and so um, she's able. She she basically got the same thing or whatever. I, I, I assume, but I've only spoke to her like once after that. But she just loves it, and uh, all the cities are clean. I've never. I, I think people are, are less arrogant, and I don't. I don't like to just say in general, but I'm saying in general. So I'm not saying everyone, but that that type of thing. But mm-hmm. whatever. I think America is, is great, but I think that a lot of other countries are, are great, and it's really it's finding balance. I think, and that's that's one thing that's way wrong with America, and the fact that everyone looks at this as a gigantic superpower that has all the answers, and then we look for. Our government, like you said, to just pretty much say solve everything like today, and most of the people up there are from an outdated system. Like everyone, they need to just elect a homeless per- person, a terrible life, but really work their ass off. That's who I think should be president. Oh man, yeah, probably not college educated because they couldn't, but really understands life. Maybe, maybe like a Vietnam War vet that, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> homeless, who was like he was divorced and his, his wife did something terrible. That guy should be president. Like normal person or just for for Pete's sake, they just need to get a woman in there. I mean Germany has done fantastic after they put a woman in there and everyone's so afraid of that. Well and I don't I there. Know, that's a fully that we could talk about that for like uh, two hours, but I mean it's just <laughs> it's 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 crazy to me that literally I know people that wouldn't vote for her because she's a her, which is like to, in this day and age, I think absurd. Well, well, well it's the same thing with it's the same thing with gay marriage. It's just absurdity. There's supposed to be the separation of church and state, and, and and two atheists, okay, if they're male and female, can walk into a judge and get married. Yeah, I know. In anywhere, anywhere, which is ridiculous to me. That 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 yeah, I mean, thank God that isn't the Bible doesn't say. Atheists can get married. You don't have to have it. It literally says that, you know, it's between a man and a woman. That's what they're judging that on. And there's two total wrongs there. And that is that, that, that two atheists can get married as long as they're heterosexual. That's that's absurd to me. That's like insane. That And then and I, and I, and I have several homosexual friends that um, actually do believe in God. Absolutely. Whether it's in their own way or even from a biblical standpoint, they just kind of throw away the thing about, I can't be gay, you know what I mean? There's like 200 plus species other than than human beings that yeah. exhibit either bi or gay sexuality. And nobody says, like giraffes, a bunch of male giraffes are in male relationships. Nobody says anything about it. They're like, oh, it's just nature. <laughs> so, it's just... I just hate how there's so many, like, you know, people conform to these social norms, and then you have mass media, and and it's terrible in today's day and age. And, but our media is, oh my gosh, Fox News. I say that to people when I, when I talk and we're having a conversation, and people want to debate, and they say something, and I'm like, you're Fox News in me. And that means that, like, you took one line 
of what I said, misc did. You know what I mean? And then she didn't add the rest. And to me, that's like, and I tell him, I'm like, that's like reading, like, randomly flipping to chapter 10 of a book. And then telling me, like, you're going to the book club meeting to discuss the book because you read a chapter. But mm -hmm. what happened is the guy actually goes insane and kills everybody. The person that you think, you know, is the great character in the book actually becomes the terrible character. So I, I just, I can't wrap my head around well, a lot of these things. But, have, you, have you ever watched uh, a movie called The Network? The Network. Yeah. Who's in that? It's an old movie. It came out in 1977. And it's a really old movie. It was a comedy when it came out. That's not, that's not, to me it's not that old. <laughs> no, it's not, no, it, it's not that old, but it's old enough, right? Because you gotta understand right. something, right? I'm 35, which means that there has been at least one generation that has come after me, right? And so, and you gotta look at it from that point of view, is the generation that's come after me, um, uh, didn't grow up with the things like you, like you and I grew up with. And you gotta look at it from that point of view too. So I'd say it's not that old. No, it's not, but it, it's old enough. Or again, certain people. Just I totally. Never, yeah. So. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah so to, to the, uh, the, the most the most famous the most famous line in that movie is "I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore." And it's yes. just, right. That's the most famous. That's the most famous line. But right. the, but there's a lot of truth in that in that movie. And it talks about the media in general. Um, and one of the things that I mean that frightened me when I that frightens me a little bit when I watch it is, it's like he talks about how powerful television is, like just how powerful the medium is. Now it's not quite as powerful today as it once was because we have this thing called the internet today, which is even more powerful than television is. And sure. um, but um, but television as a medium is insanely powerful. It picks and he says it picks presidents, it picks your leaders, it picks. It, it controls it controls the message of of what is said, how it's said, and the fact of the matter is, it goes ninety percent of you in this room do not read books. All your knowledge comes from television, and right. and the thing of it is, I can look at my like I love my grandmother to death, but I can look at her because she watches TV so much, and I can see what that's done to her. And I'm like, you know, no, I mean, I I, I stopped watching TV about six years ago. I'm a lot happier. I don't watch TV anymore. Um, I because you know, even though, like I said, I, I I'm not mature enough for Netflix. Maybe one day I'll be old and wise enough to be able to handle it. Um, but uh, but when it comes to when it comes to um, when it comes to like television, I think John Stewart said it best. Actually, he said it once. Uh, he was interviewing Ann Coulter, and they 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 did the interview. He let her have her spiel. And then he goes, okay, listen, I think the liberal conservative thing is like two old heavyweights that have gone out a long, long time ago. It's no longer about uh, conservatism versus uh, liberalism. It's about moder moderation versus extremism. The fact of the matter is, if you look at, I mean, I, and this is just not just Fox News, but every news channel you have, um, right, is they're, they're all extreme. Like like an intellectual discourse on your tel on television in the United States of America. Now I'm not gonna say your television. That's that's not wrong. That's not right. But I'm gonna say on that television, it's there's no such thing as an intellectual discourse. It's about sound bites. It's about it's about it's about sound bites. It's about you know grabbing your attention. That's all they care about. They don't care about informing you of any truth. They don't care. There's a line. There's a line is. Um, we're television. We're we're no, uh, same thing in network. We're no. We create illusions, and you people are beginning to believe in the illusions, and exactly. right, right, and right, he says nobody. And it's like and thing is, we will tell you any. And he said this. We'll tell. We will tell you any shit what we want to hear. We don't care. Well, who knows what will be peddled for truth? And I'm like, you know, and, and when you see that, and when and when that really sinks in, you're like, there. You can't. You can't even believe a single news story anymore. Like, does the, no, I, 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 it's funny because my mom was like, "Did you watch the news?" And I'm like, "No, I'd never watched the news." I also, I disconnected from TV and cable and everything about ten years ago. I do have Netflix, but I'm really the discerning Netflixer. I'm really, um, like, I have a Roku's built into my TV, like the Roku. Okay. Four and Roku before, but um, I go in and, and I have. You can download, obviously, streaming channels, and most of mine are, like, documentaries. I do have some B-movie stuff, because I grew up watching a lot of that, and that's, the, and reading it. My mom loved Stephen King, and we read, like, Sybil together and stuff when I was, like, 12. That's um, awesome. But 
watching documentaries, I think, is is one thing that you can do where people are trying to make a change. I think every everybody should be required to see Earthlings, um, which is free. I think still on YouTube. Um, it's just life changing. It's, it shows how we are connected to these three forces, and it's just it's fantastic. It's kind of animal, uh, mankind, and then um, you know nature, and, and how they're different. So yeah, I will check that out. It's, it's a great question I have to ask you because you know, writer to writer, I want to know what you think. This is what I normally ask people when, when talking about great literature, um, and that is uh, James Joyce. What is your I want to get your take on that. I, his he, his name always gets uh, thrown around as you know to these top ten works of, of all time and everything. And I've never I, I've never read them, so I can't really make a comment on his writing. Thank goodness! Anymore. I I was required to read Ulysses. I I, I never I never uh, I, I never no see see for me I grew up like what I grew up reading. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up reading Ray Bradbury. I grew up reading Isaac Asimov. I grew up reading. Oh, me too. Yeah, me that's too. what I, that's what I grew up reading. I grew I read Edgar Rice Burroughs is another one I, I grew up and I read I read a yes. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. right. So that's see, liter. Uh, I I've had this discussion um, with the writers I interviewed in Calgary. Literary to me is a very deceiving term. I, I've read some literary books. Uh, Margaret Atwood is something I've read. Um, I've I've read um, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I've read you know. Gatsby's not terrible, not not a bad book. It's not my cup of tea, but it's not a bad book. And um, and uh, the uh, like I said, to me, it's not it's not really that different. Um, it's it's all in how you tell your story. Um, I agree. Right, it's all in how I, I read the original. Like I did a essay for Ben Bella Books in two thousand seven, and I actually read the original Percival, like as for research. Um, per, and pers- the original Percival is the basis of most fiction today. It's not uh, sure. uh, 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 all of it. So I mean, if you want to talk about classics, that's about as classical as you get. I I, I now know how Spider Man's going to end if they ever end Spider Man. I know how um, you know. Is it, it's weird. I was a writer. Yeah. Like, when I'm watching a, when I'm watching a movie, like, yeah. no one knows what's going to happen, and because I've read so many books, I mean, I oh, yeah. I, try to, I try to hit seventy five every year plus, and like I just, uh, it gets boring almost because I'm like, I know what the writers are gonna do here, and then like especially if you're watching seasons of a great show, and it starts like tumbling, you like, oh, I'm always like, these writers are not. Television, television is television is an interesting medium because okay, I look at television a little bit differently. I look at who's producing it. That's really what it comes down to there, because that'll tell you what kind of stories you're gonna get. Like um. Say I watch something from HBO, there's a certain flavor to it. Whereas if I watch, say, The Big Bang Theory, which, by the way, I hate that show. Um, Me too. I hate that show. Um, Three times, something like that. Yeah. Well, it, it, well, that that I had this conversation with uh, someone named Leona Kay. I, just, I, I hate that show because it could be a lot smarter than it is, and it's not. It goes back Great. to tropes that are older than. Uh, the older than pretty much they're as old as television has been around. All right, the, the tropes. Right. And yeah. uh, um, the thing of it, the thing of it is, um, with uh, with television, it it depends. Like I don't writing is such a small part of what Hollywood is. Like right, right it's a really, really tiny, tiny part. Um, right. So I can't like I can't criticize the final product in terms of writing simply because. I don't know what was written, all right. Sometimes, sometimes when you look at it, like a good movie, sometimes some of the best parts are ad, are the ad lib parts. Ad-lib, so what, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. some some of the best parts. Just like Jaws. Like yeah. Jaws, the, the famous line of "We're gonna need a bigger." I think we're gonna need a bigger boat. Like. Yeah. No. It's just it was just. Shire just like thought of that. Yeah. Well, it, it, <laughs> but but the thing is, it's it's what actors do. If you ever if you ever get a chance, get involved in like trying to do even a small low budget production movie because you'll see the actors. Right, and actresses, um, they will they will bring things into the role you never considered, and usually make it better, right? Oh, I agree. It, it, it usually make I it better. I, I showed you, I, I wrote some plays. And I used to be in theater. I, did, I I was I was the artful dodger, had a great role to play. But yeah. um, I think what I did was way different than like the classic film from like '67 or whatever. Mm-hmm. It came out. But, um, yeah, I, I totally I totally agree. Yeah, um, and so. So when you look at so when you look at television, it's an ensemble. 
It's not just the writing, it's the direction, it's the production, it's the production values, it's the actors. It's every, like it, when you see something really, really good on television or on film, it's almost like a cumula- accumulation of all the pieces trying to just falling into alignment. Right? And if it's really, really good, I, right? They, love, they love to ruin great books for us, I think. Well, I, I, I mean, sometimes it can't fit within the confines. It's a different medium, but. Yeah, no, think, some, sometimes, sometimes, it, like, like, uh, you, like Harry Potter, you can't fit all that in there. Right, but no, no. But I mean, there are certain things that I think, is, like with Harry Potter, that was ridiculous. Like, like when I was reading um, uh, Half Blood Prince, yeah, a, a line, just one line that literally brought tears in my eyes. I had to close the book for a minute, put the bookmark, and just stop. And because I just, you know, I fell in love with Dumbledore. He's yeah. literally still one of my favorite literary characters. And the part where he goes in the cave and he gets out, and Harry's kind of freaking out. You know, he's he's carrying Dumbledore, and he kind of says like. You know, Harry's like, don't beat her, something like that. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember exactly, but he basically he's telling him, don't be scared, you know, and everything's going to be okay. And he, through feeling terrible and he's going to die, and he doesn't, you know what I mean? He just looks at Harry, kind of grins, and he says, I'm not scared, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. And they could have put that line in, and they didn't. And then if you look at the, like, bonus features, that's a deleted scene that mm-hmm. literally takes, like, yeah. that would have took, that would have took three seconds, and it's such a powerful moment that I think you to have between those two characters so I dislike that kind of stuff and then they add things that are just ridiculous um, so I don't like that like they, they, and again that's other people picking what they think is appropriate well, it, it's, funny you bring, it, it's funny you bring Harry Potter because that's actually one of the few exceptions where it um, she pretty much had her say of what went and didn't go into the films they, they, they didn't really have right. a choice they, they didn't really have a choice with her um, Aragon's a better example because I, I know Christopher Pellini enjoy, enjoyed the money he got for that movie I'm not so sure he enjoyed that movie I'm, I, I know I, 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 loved, I loved the books yeah. I, I remember waiting I got Eldest and I, and I was like oh my gosh there's a movie and yeah. I, what a disappointment comparatively it, to his uh, to the books, but again, he didn't have the he didn't have the, the say that right. she did yeah. because he did good in books, but not that good, right? right. And uh, and and the thing of it is, um, you know, he wrote it. He wrote it really young. I think his first book he wrote it, it, the entirety, the entire novel. I think he wrote when he was like fifteen or sixteen. Yeah, no, ex- exactly. No, you, you yeah. gotta give him you gotta give him mad props because he he's taken care of for the rest of his life. But on that note, on that note though, I mean, same token. He's he uh, he put together a really really um, um, good book, but but again, you don't when you go to, when you get into it's a Shark Tank, and there's no there's no ifs ands or buts about it, and he didn't have the power she did, and this is when it, when the books were really starting to get into the movies a lot more often than they, than they were in the past, oh, yeah. and and again so they they they, they ruined that franchise. I mean they there's four or five there's four or five movies in that if they ever go back to that someday um because now that the whole series is concluded you have you have enough although if they ever do an aragon something in television again i would rather be a tv show because that would be a really you have the full epic start to finish and you could do a lot of really cool things yeah um kind of like it's the same I love C.S. Lewis. Yeah. And it was great because while he was alive, they tried to make um, some of, 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 like, you know, Lion, yeah. Lynch of the Wardrobe, which is obvious. I hated, too, that they didn't start with Magician's Nephew. You don't even start on book one. I guess, not, everything's out of order. But anyways, he wouldn't. He stopped it when he was alive because they tried and they had these terrible animatronics kind of things, which were just kind of coming around. So they had these ridiculous, like, you know, Good I'm sure, it, I haven't seen them, but it, from what I've been described, it's kind of like the Chuck E. Cheese band guys playing up on the thing. Yeah. And they were playing, like, the, the cheetahs and things that he had written, and he's like, this is terrible. I can do this. And so he did have a say, and they stopped doing it, but I think he would have liked what they did with it eventually. But, um, yeah, so much is losing. But, I mean, it's a different medium, and I love how John Green... Some people kind of got mad at him because they were like, why did you cast this person in Fault in Our Stars? Or, and he was just like, it's funny because on his Twitter, if you look, it's like, he says author and blogger and da, da, da. And then the last line of his little bio is, and person who does not cast movies. 
know what I mean? Well, well yeah, because again, he, he's big, but he doesn't have the... Again, there are just some things you have no control, and you got to pick and choose your battles, right? Right? So, I mean, I mean, does it matter who's cast there? Probably right. not in the grand scheme of things. It might, What matters? What's the story I'm telling? That's the important part, right? And... I mean, and that's what you fight for. And and again, I I worked with somebody that that had connections to Hollywood, and I got to see some of the crazy things that they tried to do with him. And yeah, like you know, he uh, he's um he, he's at like I said, there's a some of the, some of what he went through. I mean, I just that's like that's a machine. Um, you got to go in there, you got to go in there, gun loaded, and you got to make some decisions about what is worth fighting for. If I ever get anything I made put into a movie or, or film, right? I all right, especially considering what I've seen, it's like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to control the casting. And the question I'm gonna have in my head is is it gonna be worth the battle? Right? Does it matter that much? Yeah, I think right? you're gonna say is John is John Stamos gonna be in this movie. Yeah. Exactly. And if John Stamos is gonna be in this movie, will it change <laughs> will it change the grand scheme of things? Probably I'm not. Gonna, but what he brings to it is gonna be fantastic. Hopefully. That's all you know is, is well, no, yeah, that, that, then you just that, then 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 you drink your shy vodka, then or tequila or whatever you had to drink, and then <laughs> and then you go and you cl- cross your fingers and you hope for the best. That's what that's what that's what that, that's, what that, that's what you do there. But that's that's the thing, right? It, it, it's you have gotta understand that uh, some some things are just not worth fighting for, and it, and you uh, gotta pick and cho- you gotta pick and choose your battles, uh, and that's and that's the thing, right? Um. Well, I mean, which which one of us writers would not love to see them flush out some movie form or something that we dreamed up in our yeah, exactly. Head that we just exactly found created the world, and then I mean, it's it's got to be a, such an amazing thing, no matter what they do. So, um, I I don't know. I think that's pretty pretty amazing for, for me. And that is part one of my conversation with Jason Tredsman. Sorry, Bretsman. Uh, part two will air early next week. Uh, his young adult series, The Trait Saga, will be coming out this fourth quarter through a traditional publisher, which at this moment in time cannot be named. Um, beyond that, though, um, I'm looking forward to reading his stuff. And like I said, we get into some more interesting stuff in part two, including his start in the industry. I encourage you to check it out next week. But until then, I'm going to wrap up the show for now. Um, if you want to support this show, you can do the following things. You can subscribe to it on iTunes, or you can su- subscribe to it on Podomatic.com. iTunes is the easier the two to describe, subscribe to. Just look up Just Josh, and you will find me. Um, you can buy my books, The Watcher and Storm Dancer, which are available through Mirror World Books. Or you can find them at Amazon.com. Uh, beyond that, if you, or you can check out my merchandise at Redbubble. I'm going to have to actually get that address again. I did just sell my first Redbubble thing. I'll probably get to talk about that with the next uh, podcast, which is really cool. Um, or you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at jpentaleresco, J-P-A-N-T-A-L-L-E-R-E-S-E-O. Or you can find sign up for my newsletter at tinyletter.com slash jpentaleresco. All right, guys. That'll do it. But whatever you do. Whatever you're going for, stay inspired out there, all right? Don't do anything I wouldn't do, and I'll talk to you next week. Josh. Josh.